the story is very hard to say because it reflects a very low point in my life. Back in 2014, I graduated from Northwestern University. I got my PhD in chemistry. I proceeded to then do a postdoc at SUNY Albany and immediately became unemployed after one year. During my PhD, I managed to do a lot of work, complete a thesis, but I did not have any publications. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about an alternative career path in chemistry that does not require you to have publications. Now, if you're somebody, a graduate student in some of the sciences, and you're thinking about what are you going to do with your PhD when you graduate, this video is for you. Let me talk to you about a career path that very few people in the natural sciences, in engineering, even consider when it comes to graduating. And that is the career path of the sales scientist. Let's first establish the basics. You may be a first year graduate student, a fifth year, a sixth year graduate student, and you're trying to figure out what are you going to do after graduate school. You might be considering a career in academia to become a professor. And that's great. I think that that is something that one should pursue. But let me at least just tell you right now that the odds are stacked against you. It's not necessarily because you're not capable of doing it. You are probably very capable of being a professor. There are literally not enough academic positions out there for you to have a job. One in eight graduate students in at least chemistry can actually become professors, literally just based on the number of jobs, which means that seven of your colleagues have to work in other fields. And yet there is very little information out there about alternative careers in the natural sciences. So with that said, I wanna to talk to you about what exactly is a sales scientist? Because you probably either haven't heard of one, and if you have heard of one, you probably have no idea what exactly does a sales scientist do? So let's consider that you are a graduate student and you go into the lab on a regular basis to do some experiments. Well, you are using equipment, you are using chemicals, you are using specimens, and all those instruments, equipment, specimens, consumables, whatever you're using, it came from a company. A company that has made its money off of selling to an academic lab. And they probably sell to government labs and industrial labs. Maybe it's a microscope. Well, somebody had to design, develop that microscope, but ultimately sell that microscope to you, the customer. And when you have technical questions about how does this microscope work or how does how do these pipettes work? What's the calibration on these pipettes? Some PhD scientist did some of the work. Some engineer designed it and some PhD scientist made it work and also goes around to sell those things to other graduate students and professors who need that kind of equipment. You've probably seen it before. When you go to a conference, you see all these exhibition booths and there's all these companies all over the place. Well, the people who work at those companies uh, range from just people with bachelor's degrees to purely business people, but a lot of people there are engineers and a good chunk of them, a solid chunk, are PhDs who do nothing but work on sales. So they're PhDs who work there, why? Why don't you just have sales people? Why don't you just have people with, say, a bachelor's degree? And the reason has to do with the fact that literally the customer is a PhD. As a PhD, you know what they want. You know about literature, citations, the quality of an instrument. You know how to explain these things to your customer. And someone who just has a bachelor's degree, someone who just does just business and sales without much of a, even a science background, doesn't gain the trust of that customer. So you might be asking yourself the question, what exactly does a sales scientist do on a day-to-day -day basis? I mean, you're just some PhD scientist. You're working on something like mechanistic studies of pyridinium electrocatalysis for CO2 reduction. Or you may be studying the catalysis of silver nanoparticles synthesized by atomic layer deposition for the silver epoxidation reaction. Or ultra-high vacuum tip-enhanced Raman spectroscopy of single molecules. I'm gonna do this all day. 
But sales is somewhat of a very different thing that you may have absolutely no experience on. And so it's naturally curious to wonder what exactly does a sales scientist do? So as a sales scientist, your job is to generate sales. And the way to generate sales is to find customers. And to do this, you're trying to find leads, people who would be interested in buying your product. And so this process of finding and generating leads is referred to as data mining. Today, it's really looking through the internet and finding potential customers, people, scientists who would be interested in buying your equipment. And as a PhD scientist, you know the types of people where this equipment is appropriate. So data mining is a huge part of the job of a sales scientist and reaching out and sending emails to these potential customers is part of the job. Additionally, going to conferences is another way to generate leads. You're going to have an exhibition booth, people are gonna walk by, you're going to reach out to them, and you're gonna try to find people who are interested in your equipment. So these are like the two primary ways of generating leads and ultimately generating sales is physically through travel. So about 50% or more of your time is going to be spent traveling. And when you're not traveling, you're gonna be sending lots of emails. You're going to be following up on customers who you reached out to. You're going to be following up on people who you have visited. Uh, you're going to be getting a lot of emails from potential customers on repairs, technical issues, and it's going to be your job to respond to them. What I just described is a very general sense of what a sales scientist does, but depending on the company that you're working for, you may have additional tasks, but it all depends on the size of the company. And if you're interested, I wouldn't be opposed to making another video about what a sales scientist does and basically the breakdown of different jobs and things, tasks that a sales scientist could do depending on the size of the company. I commonly get questions whenever I go to trade shows and talk to other graduate students. They want to know, what exactly do I do? Like, I have a PhD, I went through the same process that they did, but they have absolutely no clue what a sales scientist does. And it's okay. I didn't know either until I actually worked as a sales scientist. And I want to present this to you as an alternative career path. Somebody with a PhD in a natural science and you work in sales. And here's the thing that's really important. Actually, there are a few things that are really important. One, your publications almost don't matter one bit. I was not asked one question about my publications or my publication record when I became a sales scientist during my interview process. Not one, not one question. And I know that as a graduate student, your validity, your existence, your, your, your self-esteem is very much tied to your publications. And so if you don't publish a lot, you might know a tremendous amount of knowledge incredible troubleshooting skills. You may be brilliant, but for whatever reason, maybe you just haven't published because either your advisor just won't sign off on, on publications, uh, collaborations just don't work out. There's a myriad of reasons, but those things don't matter when you're trying to become a sales scientist. But the second thing that I think is really important that you know is that your whole time in graduate school, you have been taught that publishing becoming a professor, that this track is the pinnacle of existence. You want to become this famous professor who has pushed the field of science out. That's great, it's wonderful. But you can live a happy, meaningful life working as a sales scientist. You do not have to become a professor. Don't think that a sales scientist is not a worthwhile career to pursue. And if you're someone like me who hit rock bottom after graduate school and you know you had no publications, you may have been unemployed, it's okay. There is a career path. And and trust me, I know. I know that I'm not the only one and you're not the only one either who has gone through these struggles. I see it everywhere. If you like this video, I would hope that you would hit the like button, at least for the YouTube algorithm, and to promote it to other people, other PhDs who might be struggling, that they, they need to watch this. They need to know about this 
alternative career path, share it with them. I hope you would also subscribe to my channel. That would just be nice. But leave a comment if you would like to know more about becoming a sales scientist. The specifications, the path, what it's like, what it's really like. This week marks the five year anniversary since I started working at the company Pine Research Instrumentation as a sales scientist. And it has been a truly wonderful experience. I am so, so much happier working as a sales scientist at Pine than I ever was as a PhD student. All right, folks, I think I've said enough. Please like, comment, subscribe. Leave a comment if you want more content like this. It's something I'm passionate about. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna keep making, you know, videos about personal finance, investing. I'll still continue to make those. But I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something new. All right, I'll see you soon.